Hey everyone, this is Vinny from Ari. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to use the shell modifier in 3ds Max. So I just have some basic objects here that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate different parameters of the shell modifier. So first I'm just gonna start off with this line, which could be some kind of floor plan or other kind of hard surface object. And then I just extruded that line and quickly added an edit poly on top of that just to remove that excess edge there. Now what the shell modifier is gonna allow you to do is add thickness to any type of model. So if I add a shell on top of here, just by typing shell into my modifier list, what you'll see is that I now have some nice thickness on my model. Now the most important two parameters of your shell modifier are gonna be this inner amount and outer amount value. What these are gonna allow you to do is extrude your faces of your model either on the inside of their normals or on the outside of their normals. So what I can do is drag this out on the inner amount and that's gonna extrude inward on my normals for all my faces on my model. And I can do them at the same time or I could just do one particular value. So now if this was some kind of floor plan, I quickly have some thickness to my walls. I can also increase the amount of segments that are created by this new edge here simply by increasing the segment value if I need to add more detail in my model. Now I'm just gonna move on to another example to talk further about the shell modifier. So I have this basic line here that I added a lathe modifier to, and then just added an edit poly on top of just to seal up this bottom of this object with quads, and then to tighten it up a little bit. And then I also added a turbo smooth on top of here, just to smooth out the model a bit. So what I could do now is just add a shell on top of here and that's gonna add some nice thickness to my model. So again, the shell modifier extrudes out on the normal direction of your faces. So you can see here, I'm getting this kind of edge curve shape because that is the normal direction of my faces there. If I wanted a flat top on top of here, all I'd have to do is go to my edit poly and just pull these edges up slightly. Just using shift and drag here to drag straight up on my Y axis. Then what I can do is just go back to that shell and you're gonna see I'm gonna have a nice flat top on top of there because that's the new normal direction. Now we can talk about the bevel edges parameter of your shell modifier. By default, this is gonna be checked off, but I'm just gonna check mine on and you're gonna notice that nothing really happens. Well, in order for this to work, we do need a bevel spline that's gonna define the bevel of our edge here. So I have a few splines created, just kind of a basic one here and then a more complicated one. So what I can do is go to that bevel spline selection and select on my spline. And what you're gonna see is that our edge is gonna take information from our spline, so all of those segments, and apply that to our edge here. So we'll get a exact copy of that spline. And this spline two is gonna be live. So what I can do is, let me just move this a bit closer. I can live edit all of the points on the spline and I'll see a live result on my model. So this also works with more complicated splines. So if I just switch over to this one here by clicking on this bevel spline button and clicking on my spline, you'll see I'll have that change reflected. And this is gonna work exactly with the interpolation you have on your spline. So as I increase my interpolation steps, you notice that the edge count of my edge increases the same amount. Now we have some other parameters here with our shell modifier. We have these inner, outer, and edge material IDs. So you can use these to quickly add different material IDs to the inside, outside, and edge of your model, which is great for adding different materials to those groups of faces. We also have some smoothing parameters here. So we can change the auto smoothing to be on or off and affect the angle of that auto smooth. We can also change the smoothing group specifically for the edge of our shell. We also have some particular parameters for how the UV map works for the edge of our shelled model, as well as we can affect our texture vertice offset. Now there's more information on the particulars of these edge mapping parameters within the 3ds Max 2020 documentation. So if you wanted to know more specific information about that, you can check on their website where they go into exact detail on how these different types of UV mapping work. Now another interesting parameter of the shell modifier are the select edges, interfaces, and outer faces buttons, 
What these are going to allow you to do is literally select either just the edges, interfaces, or outer faces of your model, and you can select all of them at the same time. And then this selection is going to save to your stack. Let's say, for example, I click on the Select Outer Faces button. What I can then do is add an Edit Poly on top of here and go into my Polygon selection. And that selection is going to be saved if I quickly want to make edits to those outer faces of my model. I don't have to manually go through and just select these outer faces of the shell. Now there is one more parameter I want to talk about for the shell modifier, and that's going to be the straightened corners. That's going to be at the bottom. I'm just going to keep that checked off first, and then we'll just add some thickness on the outer mount to this object here, which is kind of this rectangle-like tube. So you'll notice as I increase my outer amount, what's going to happen is that the inside of my tube is going to move at a different angle than the outside. So I'm going to get kind of this weird inflated looking effect for my tube, and that's not exactly what I want. I kind of want just some straight thickness added to the whole tube. So what I can do is just press this straighten corners button. What that's going to allow me to do is just have straight corners throughout the tube and just increase the thickness uniformly, just like that. So that covers the essentials of using the shell modifier in 3ds Max. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel where we release tips, tricks, and tutorials on CG visualization software such as 3ds Max. You can also check out our school on our website, re.school, where we have in-person and online classes on CG visualization topics such as architectural rendering, product rendering, and much more. Again, this has been Vinny from Ari, and I hope to see you in another video.